What's up everybody, JJ here, and this is the Carvera Air. A fully enclosed desktop CNC machine that greatly increases what I'm able to produce here at home. I'm no longer just limited to plastics from 3D printing, now I can use wood and even metal. I'm in no way an expert on CNC at this point, but I have learned a lot doing several little projects on this machine. So I've learned a lot about what I like, and what nice features there are with this machine. And then I wanted to talk about some of the downsides that come with CNC machining over 3D printing. I still think 3D printing is an incredible tool and this does not replace it, but it is an awesome tool that unlocks a lot of awesome possibilities. So first off, we should talk about the specs of this machine and some of the nice features that I really like. This is a 200 watt fully enclosed solid CNC machine. It's got a work area of 300 millimeters in the X, 200 millimeters in the Y, and 130 millimeters in the Z axis. Using the rotary tool for four axis milling, the usable volume is 92 millimeters in diameter and 200 millimeters in length. The motion system uses linear rods and ball screws, so it is a really strong and sturdy machine. It comes with a wired probe attached to the tool head, and that also allows for mesh bed leveling. And the quick tool changing lever is so nice for changing tools quickly, especially for popping the probe in at the start of every single job and then popping it out when you're done. It comes with a dust extraction hose built in and air assist hose already built in as well. You do need to have your own vacuum for sucking out dust and chips or your own air assist module if you want to use that. When it comes to the actual materials you're able to carve on here, it is able to do all your plastics, your hardwoods, even metals up to aluminum and brass. I have seen online a few people doing steel or even titanium. That is gonna be pretty difficult with this machine, but it is really cool that that's a possibility. This is the Carvera Air, the cheaper version of the base Carvera by Makeera. And it really seems like this is only cutting a few features, but saving you a lot of money. The base Carvera does have a slightly larger build volume. It comes with an automatic tool changer and an automatic dust extractor. I do like that they were able to keep all the base features the same, with those upgrades really just being on automation. So if you were using this to machine out a lot of duplicate parts, something you're selling maybe, I think the upgraded features would make you more money if you could keep this machine running more. But as a hobbyist, if it's a little bit slower because I have to be around to change out the tools, that's fine. I think it's time we dove into the projects that I've made on this machine. And one of the coolest part of this machine is that it comes with a beginner kit with a bunch of tutorial projects on here. Most of these are those tutorial projects and they do a really good job stepping you through the basics of CNC. Cause there is a lot you have to do here. It's not like a 3D printer where you can just load the filament, press go, and it'll start making things. You need to learn how to attach material in here and how to properly set it up. So the first project I did was this three axis relief. It's a really awesome detailed carving of a pirate ship and pirate paraphernalia around there out of this epoxy board. It shows you a great picture of how to set it up. It has the preloaded files inside there. It tells you which settings to use when setting it up, which bits to use. And this is incredibly detailed. This was a huge eye opener. I was not expecting it to be able to even carve something this intricately detailed. Next up, I moved on to this little lamp project. This uses multiple different parts, and I think it's such a cool integrated design here. First off, you do a clear acrylic carving here, and they have several different files inside here. There's a face, there's a balloon, there's a Carvera logo, R2-D2, and I think Spider-Man. So you can choose which ones you want. I'm a Star Wars fan, so I picked the R2-D2. Mine came with a pre-made PCB, but they do come with a kit to make your own PCBs. I haven't dived into the PCB making yet because I'm still getting a handle on all the other parts of this machine, but I do love that it has the ability to make simple PCBs. This base part is milled out of solid ABS plastic. Then comes the machining of the aluminum button here. This is really awesome that it's fully machined out of aluminum. I think it looks incredible and it's so cool that I can now machine things out of aluminum and brass. Putting it all together is super simple, and this is a color changing acrylic light. The button allows you to change the brightness here, and I think it turned out so cool. The next awesome feature here is the rotary module. This really unlocks the possibilities of this machine with four axis milling. This tool attaches to the base plate in there, and then you attach your parts to this whole part holder here, and then you can mill away. Your X, Y, and Z axis are still there, but now this can turn the part as it's milling. 
The parts turn out incredible. This is the preset project file. It's another epoxy board now in a block. Another downside here, I oriented it incorrectly at the beginning. That's why the nose and the back of the hat here got cut off. I think because the person was supposed to be oriented in the diagonal of this block, but instead it's oriented sort of square with the front and back of the block. I thought I set it up following how they told me to load the block in there. Apparently I didn't because it's 45 degrees rotated incorrectly. Next up, I think we should go through the process of making something on the Carvera Air, going from an idea all the way to a finished product. And in that process, I wanted to highlight the differences with 3D printing and additive manufacturing. They are very different here, and there's a lot of little things that I didn't fully realize until I was actually using these machines. First up, you need to have an idea. You can either CAD model something yourself or find an STL online. This clone trooper helmet I found online, STL will be linked in the description. Next, we need to decide what material to make this out of. With 3D printing, we can decide our material, and then really we just need to make sure we have enough of that material to make this as large and as dense as we want. If this single spool isn't enough, I can just add on any other color or any other spool of this same material. So when you get down to the end of a spool, it's still usable. With CNC, we need to decide what material and then make sure we have a block of that material larger than we want to make the object because we need to subtract down to the finished product. So this was actually the wasteboard of this, but we could use this to make a second one. But once you get down to a small enough piece, you might not be able to make anything out of it anymore. You can't splice these pieces together like you can with 3D printing. So you have the STL file. Next, you need to take it into a CAM software. This is where you lay out your tool paths and decide which bits you're going to use. So I take this STL into their Makeara cam, and then I can resize it, shape it, and stretch it to make it fit within the block that I've selected. The next step is deciding which bits to use to make this object. With this one, I selected two bits, one really large to do the roughing pass, and then a more delicate V-carve bit to do the final details. It is really nice that in the Makeara cam software, they do have preloaded speeds and feeds recommended for all of their bits with some pre-selected materials. So your hardwoods, your softwoods, brass, aluminum, you probably could optimize these speeds once you learn CNCing and could optimize and speed things up. But as a beginner, it was really nice to not have to think about those settings. I then had to add in the support structures. I put this solid cylinder on the bottom and a solid cylinder on the top. One thing it doesn't do is tell you if your operations are even possible. For this example, it tried to dive too deeply in with the first bit and it did break off the top support structure. I was just kind of guessing on how big I should make things and I guess I guessed incorrectly. The software does have some limitations in how much it knows. Luckily they do have great tutorials because it is a lot of learning to figure out how to use CAM software. The next step is exporting your toolpaths and there's two major options here. One is to export them all as one project that way it'll do the roughing pass and then it tells you to change the bit and then you do the finishing pass. The problem there is if you do run into an issue in between steps, you have to go back and rerun the entire thing all at once. With this one specifically, I exported them as two different files, one project for a roughing pass and one project for a finishing pass. Since the Carvera Air doesn't have an auto tool changer, I found that to be a little bit easier because I was running into issues and would have to rerun the entire project. After the CAM software, we need to take the file into their control software. With it, we select the file we want to actually run right now, and then we have a few settings we can tweak. We can change what kind of mesh if we want to mesh probe an object or just a single probe and where it's even located on the board. And that reminds me, we do need to figure out how we're even going to attach this block to the CNC machine. So if we're doing a three axis carving, it is pretty simple. I have an L bracket here. I can affix it here. And then now we have even more options. These are side holders, or I can use edge support pieces like they did in the tutorial or you could use double-sided tape, or you can use masking tape on the project, masking tape on the board, and then super glue those two masking tape pieces together. There are so many different methods and combination of these methods for how you secure your part in place. And for this carving specifically, I use their four axis rotary tool. This, you need to remove this L bracket, pull up the NDF board. This attaches with six screws. You tighten the clamp in place, move the end stock to hold it on the other side, and then you're ready to go. And then how you secure the object in place 
does affect how you should set up the cam software. You don't want the spinning spindle to run into any of these expensive support pieces. But now that you have secured your part in place and you do have the correct files loaded into the control software, you can control it either through your phone or through a desktop computer over Wi-Fi. You do have a lot of different options for what works for you. I was using a Wi-Fi connection here because it was really easy to use the software on the phone. It is the exact same interface on the mobile and the desktop versions, which is just really awesome and makes it really easy to use. Next, we are able to start machining. First up, change the bit to the probe so it will probe your object however you set it up to make sure you're ready to start machining. Then you put in your first bit, it starts machining. You do need to stay nearby or figure out how you're going to be vacuuming out the chips. You could set up an automatic system. For me personally, since my shop vac was both very loud and didn't seem to be sucking super well through the hose here, I would just periodically lift up the cover here, stick the vacuum in and suck the chips off. Then I could turn the vacuum off. If you are running multiple operations on a project and have to change out the bits, after it finishes one, it'll go to the edge and then in the software, it'll tell you which bit to change to. You change out your tools then tell it to continue, it probes that tool, and then continues on. So if you do have a lot of tool changes in a job, you do have to stay around the machine to do those changes manually. Finally, the operation is complete. Depending on which bit and how much material you're removing, it could take several hours. Now we need to do post-processing here. No matter what, you're probably gonna have some support structures that you need to cut off. This one, I need to cut off the bottom one, but this makes a great example of showing kind of what it looks like after you're completed. Same with this Egyptian statue. I did have to cut the top off and I didn't cut it off super flush, so I probably should come back with a Dremel, some sandpaper, some sort of post-processing to actually make it look good. 3D printing, on the other hand, is much simpler. You download a slicing software, usually the manufacturer's slicing software. It has all the preloaded settings. You upload the STL file in there. You have the option of changing some settings if you want, but you don't really need to. You can just hit slice, send, and it will start printing your object. Then you don't manually have to babysit the machine to change things out as it's running or changing nozzles. You select one nozzle and then it prints the entire thing in there. This does kind of need to be babysat while it's running because you do need to remove the chips and you do need to change nozzles during a process. So your post-processing can involve cutting and sanding. A lot of steps can be involved. With 3D printing, support structures are becoming really good now. So even that is pretty minimal. Most parts I print pop right off the build plate and they're just ready to go. They are very simple. A child could use a 3D printer. CNC machines are still not there. So that's the differences between CNCing and 3D printing in the process and how easily you can make something. The Carver Air makes it pretty easy compared to other CNC machines, but just CNC as a fundamental thing, I don't think ever will get to the level that 3D printing is when it comes to ease of use. Even the simple things on a CNC machine are a very involved process. So what are the downsides when it comes to this machine? I think the first thing is that it is only a 200 watt spindle in there. That's kind of a mid range power on a really nice machine, but your power on the spindle will affect how quickly you can cut things out. Carving something like this will take two to three hours, depending on how you set things up. 200 watts is nice, but there are definitely more powerful options out there. And I would love for Carvera to give you an upgrade option in the future. The other downside I found people complaining about online is that there's no ability to add a liquid coolant system for machining metals. There is an air assist tube here that can be used for the laser, or it also recommends you could turn it around and have it blowing on the part when you are machining metal and hopefully that could help with things but that's still not going to be the same as using a liquid coolant system when machining metal so if you are planning on doing mostly metal machining there might be some other options that are better for that use case out of the box it did have some cracks that seem to have happened in shipping because they said they check the machines before they go in the boxes and they don't have those cracks then it, as it came out of the box on my end it did have some cracks so I think it's something in shipping and I have seen other people complain about that online. Hopefully they can get that fixed. And then the last big issue I did run into is the Wi-Fi naming issue. And I'm not totally sure if it's because my Wi-Fi name is too long or that there's the special character, but I have tried several different times and the guest network now works, but I have to switch my phone over to the guest network to be able to connect to this machine. And that is kind of an annoyance, I think it's a firmware issue that they could really easily fix. And hopefully after this, they can get it fixed in a future firmware update. So overall, this is an incredibly powerful tool that now allows me to make things out of metal and wood. 
instead of just the plastics that 3D printers can use. It is a big learning curve learning what all these machine bits do, and I still don't know what all of them do, but I do understand the basics of things and setting up my own projects and how to hold materials down. It's a lot of things you have to learn to get started with this machine, but they really do a great job with the tutorials of stepping you through the basics and giving you the tools to go make your own projects. And after the first few projects, I'm really excited to continue and keep making more. I will be making more on YouTube Shorts. Subscribe so you don't miss any future projects. But that just about wraps it up. If you do have any more questions or things I didn't cover on this machine, there are a lot of tools that came in the box that I still haven't used. I just haven't gotten to everything that there is to this machine. So if you have any questions, I'll try to help you out. As always, go out there, create something amazing today, and I'll see you in the next video.